don't see it awkward but, at all. I'm that's, not ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. That's good. I mean, I'm I'm assuming that guy he uh, he's the one who inspired you to start start this um, number one passion for for dancing. For the most part, yeah, and I'm really grateful for that. I don't think I would have done it without him. Mm -hmm. Was he your partner? Is he still is he still your partner? Dancing. He was never my partner. Oh. Um, he's still dancing at the studio, and. I mean, maybe we'll be partners in the future, but he's really, really tall. So that wouldn't really work out too well, in my opinion, because I'm kind of short. No, res uh, no disrespect on that. Ethan? So um, what are some things or people that inspire you? I would say aside from everybody at my dance studio, one of the people who inspire me most um, would be my younger sister. My younger sister, Olivia, I'm just going to bring her name into it because I don't want to refer to her as my younger sister over and over again. But uh, she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes a few years ago, and that kind of changed my life and my parents' life forever. That is, that is the biggest change, I think, that has hit our family. And it required daily, at first, it required daily shots of insulin at every meal. It required us having to prick her finger to check her blood glucose levels, which is blood sugar, essentially. But it just was such a huge change to the way we lived our everyday lives because we had to start thinking about, oh, how many carbs are in this? What, what, how high is your blood sugar levels? And we still have to look out for that, but it's with the help of technology, it's gotten a lot easier just because um, there are new ways for us to monitor her blood sugar levels to the point where it's continuous and we don't have to take all those extra steps. But for me, she's been such an inspiration because she is always smiling, always happy. She's so energetic and she's such a trooper. Like I feel so upset that this had to happen to her, but she is such a great person and has taken it all with a smile and, and participated in camps, participated in clinical trials for new products. And actually, I think she's made a few friends from the type one diabetic community in the Bay Area. And there have just been, while a lot of doors have been closed temporarily, a lot of new ones were also opening for us. Like we were brought into this new community of people and we got to go out there and do volunteer work and it's it's unfortunate but she always she's always smiling she's always having fun and i think she likes dressing up to go to the uh, the fundraiser events um so that's great but she just is an incredible amazing person and to me she is just living proof that even with a disability um like type 1 diabetes she can still do anything she wants to and she is still such a strong person so she's like your um, motivator she motivates you you know to be positive every single day yeah. she motivates me to be a stronger better person and now how how old is your um sister she's 12. 12. oh that's a lovely story stella i'm glad that you shared that with us um excellent story Next question is from getting to know you through social media and not called house party. I don't even know what that is. You seem to know a lot about human relationships and you talked about how you, what your true story was, how you got into dancing. So what's the most crucial thing about a healthy relationship? I think in terms of all sorts of relationships, whether they are romantic ones or familial ones or just um, friendships, the two most important things, and maybe I'm adding on a third here, but the two most important things are trust and um, communication. Those two things for me, at least, everybody has their own things that they prioritize, but I think those are the two most important. And it sounds very cliche to be like, oh, well, trust is important. You have to have trust, but you really do. Like you have to be able to open up to these people and you have to be able to 
be vulnerable because you may not realize it, but you're taking a lot of risks, especially when you're entering a romantic relationship. And there is no relationship without the risk. And I think in order to communicate, you have to trust somebody. So those kind of go hand in hand. And the reason why communication is so important is because you can't be mad at somebody for something that they don't know they're doing wrong because that's unfair. Because they, they're they just sitting there having no idea that they hurt your feelings or they might not have no idea if you're upset, especially if you're communicating online via text messaging. Like you just can't sense that stuff. They can't see you. They can't look through the screen. And I myself have done this and it's incredibly petty. It's incredibly... It's not cool, but just the whole leaving on red thing where it's like, okay, well, you left me on red for so many hours. I'm going to leave you on red for so many hours here. You can get a taste of your own medicine. And I think that's very ineffective. And looking back on the times that I've done that to people, I'm almost ashamed of myself. Like, I can't believe I did that. I could have just told them that they made me upset. I could have just talked to these people and been like, hey, are you busy or something? Like, I'm, I just want to know what's up. Are you mad at me? And being communicative and being able to reach out like that, it builds a foundation for a better relationship because if one person is under the understanding that, oh, you can leave me on red, it's fine. I can leave you on red, it's fine. But the other person doesn't know that, then it creates some problems because you're going to have somebody who's constantly upset and the other person isn't even going to know. And you can spend those six hours or however many hours, you can spend that amount of time being upset at the person for leaving you on red or for doing the thing that you didn't like, which by the way is incredibly exhausting. Or you can spend that amount of time being normal and having a normal conversation and things will be perfectly fine even sooner. So I think those are the two things that kind of get overlooked a lot when you're actually looking to build foundations for a realistic relationship. And I would say the third thing that needs to be thrown in there is respect. And a lot of people think that that's a given and that's going to happen regardless of what is going on. But that is incredibly, incredibly important. Especially now there's so much conversation about girls both respecting themselves and respecting their boundaries and guys too but there's a lot of talk about um rape culture that's being brought into the media right now and what people don't understand is that the your boundaries won't push the right people away it won't scare them away and once you start respecting your body and you once you start respecting your boundaries other people are going to respect that too And that doesn't just go with like physical stuff. It also goes with emotional stuff. And I think that is a very close three things that kind of need to be thought about in a relationship. Granted, I don't think anybody should be obsessing over that, but it's just something to think about. Definitely. I mean, out of all the guests that I've asked um, this, I feel like you're the one who actually went so deep into this conversation thing right don't you think ethan yeah i'm definitely gonna bring that to chami you're in my relationship a romantic one that has been going on for two years i'm definitely gonna bring it to that thank you very much for that help it definitely is gonna make this relation last a lot longer i mean if i ask this question to ethan i, I wonder what you're gonna say ethan what what, what were you gonna say Ethan? i want to bring you to that i don't know um exactly <laughs> Probably something stupid. Just say one thing. I mean, Stella gave three three excellent lists. And how about, what about you? What's the one thing that's most crucial about a healthy relationship? Make sure you give each other cake. <laughs> what type of cake? Not the bad kind of cake, but the actual kind of cake that you eat. Like vanilla? I don't Just know, funfetti cake. In a bakery. Go give someone some cake. Could have chosen flowers, a ch- chipotle. No, no, cake. No, but everything is cake now. Haven't you seen the memes? Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I haven't. I'm I'm pretty old 
to look at memes now. Yeah, Tommy's pretty old. Doesn't know a lot of things. Young culture. <laughs> Says you. <laughs> um, I think we're on our last question, Ethan. Yes. So what do you hope that never changes? And this can be absolutely anything. I hope, actually, I don't think there is anything that I would have that would never change. I don't, I don't exactly believe in things that don't change. And that sounds really crazy. But from my experience, without change, there is no growth. Without change, you can't learn stuff about yourself or how you function in society and you can't learn about other people. So really, if I could make sure that one thing did not change, it would be that, I don't even know if I'm saying this correctly. If one thing could never change, it would be that change is constant. I actually want, I want for there to be change. It brings both joy and sorrow but those are two things that I think people cannot live without. And they help people grow so much. And I've experienced a lot of growth because of change. And I hope that a lot more of it is coming my way. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so, not, so you wish that nothing, not, so like nothing, so you don't have anything on your mind that well, aside from the fact that I want for there to be constant change, that's the one thing I don't want to change. It's kind of a mouthful. <laughs> I think I, I think I kind of got the concept. I hope you do, audience. If, if you do, drop it down to the comments, please. I. <laughs> you just sound oh, yeah. like a basic YouTuber now, Tommy. What did I do? It's okay, basic YouTubers get views. Yeah, please. Make sure to leave a like on the video. <laughs> All right, uh, that concludes our episode today, Stella. Um. Is it Stella Parker or Stella Reynaga? Stella Reynaga. Stella, okay, thank you, Miss Stella Reynaga, for being our first ever live action guest on YouTube. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. Thank you. Such deep words from a very young woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean, seriously, drop it down to the comments. Let me hear what you what you want to say uh, make sure to please subscribe and give it a like i can't believe i hit the bell that. hit the hit bell notifications hit like button hit that notification bell yeah smash all the it's free anyway so what's what's the what's the point yeah there's so, nothing to lose nothing to lose just us on a fateful sunday afternoon and make sure to tune in next sunday with our guest with hopefully um ethan who's our guest i don't know i thought you were deciding that Stella, how would you like to be my co-host now? <laughs> that would be a huge gift. Yeah, I'm Thank sorry. You. That's tough. I'm pretty sure that's a compliment. So I'll take it. I'll take it. Mm, is it? Make sure to tune in next Sunday at 1 p.m. Thank you, Stella, and whoever you are next to me. Have a good one, folks. Peace.